Okay, welcome to the TP video for script op called Reflection Direction. We're going to come into quite a few cases when there's going to be impacts or uh, intersects, and we're going to want to calculate kind of the reflection uh, based on that. You can see right now this is kind of the end scene that we're going to end up with. Uh, and what we're using is just a simple uh, point helper using its y direction, calculating an intersect against this plane, and then we are uh, taking a look at the angle information and then we can actually this white line here is showing us what that reflection uh, vector looks like and we also use a, a little black box called show axes to kind of create this little axis helper out here and that's showing us what the uh, we're kind of creating a, a matrix based on that um, incoming direction and the hit point position so this is our script operator this is what it's going to end up looking like uh, it's going to use an incoming direction, uh, and we're, for that we are pulling the, uh, the n this point helper's y direction, and then it gets a hit point, so an actual position. Uh, we're going to use the, in this case, the intersect. Although we're gonna also going to end up using this uh, with shape collision later, and then the normal, based on that intersection, is going to be taking a look at the face of this object, this node, this plane. And you can see that's going to be represented there by that blue portion of the axes. And then what it's going to do is it's going to output um, an output direction. So it's going to be based on the incoming direction and calculating its reflection. Um, we might want to rename that to reflection dir to be a little uh, more clear. But then it also outputs an alignment, uh, which is going to show us kind of that local space that it's created and or the local align local matrix based on that uh, collision position you can see what happens is this y vector comes in here um, it's going to calculate and actually we have the normal for the geometry where it hits so what we do is we take this vector the face normal or the hit normal and we calculate a cross product it's going to give us the x portion of that leg or the right leg and then with those two in place we can actually calculate the Y uh, portion of that matrix or the alignment and then what we're going to do is we can take that incoming vector and we can use that Y uh, convert it into a quaternion uh, or an angle axis actually and then into a quaternion and then rotate that 180 degrees uh, to so that whatever the direction coming in is actually going to be the uh, direction going out and we're going to multiply that vector by that uh, quaternion rotation okay so let's start off in our starter scene and let's go ahead and open up our um, default template for creating script operators Okay, so you know the drill. We're going to replace all this. We're going to call this Reflection Dir Tutorial. And let's just go ahead and find replace all the way through. That all looks good. Can't find any more. Okay, so let's get a new Gen Class ID. And we're not going to need any variables just yet. Uh, we'll leave the description stuff alone. We kind of want to get into the meat of this pretty quick. Um, so for our inputs, we're not going to be using a particle. Uh, what we're going to need is an actual direction. And we'll call that uh, incoming direction. We use kind of long names just so that it's easier to understand when you uh, just look at these things without knowing exactly what it is. And then outputs, uh, that's a little bit jumping ahead. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these in there. Remember, we said that we were going to need a, a position input. We've got that incoming direction, which is a direction type. We've got a hit point or a hit position as a position type, and a hit normal, uh, which is provided by the in intersect or the uh, SC operator. So we'll go ahead and actually add those. One of those will be a position, of course. So we're going to use the position data type. And we're going to do this a little bit different than our other one. We'll call that hit position. And then we're going to have another direction type. And this will be um, hit normal. 
I'm going to leave all those as needed since uh, we do require those in order for this to function. But we'll update our little markers just so we know exactly what we're dealing with. Okay, then we're going to have some outputs. One of those outputs is going to be a, a direction. Uh, remember, if you use a things like a, a point 0.3, uh, you can end up with a non-normalized vector. So it's important to use the data types that you want. Okay, so this is going to be, we'll call this reflection direction, or reflection dir. And then we're also going to add another output, and this one is going to be an alignment. And that alignment will be our um, oh, collision space alignment. We'll just give it a long name for now. We might want to change that later. Okay, and of course, neither of those are really required. You don't want to mess with the outputs there. Okay, so let's take a look and. So if our TP out ID is greater than or equal to zero, meaning our something is asking for one of these outputs, then what we want to do is uh, we're going to want to set up some variables for our inputs. And so what we're going to do, we're actually going to rip out that stuff there because we don't really want to be dealing with that at the moment. What we'll do is say, okay, if it's asking for an output, let's assign some variables. Let's call uh, incoming direction is going to be tp in out get um, in value uh, number zero. So what that's going to do is it's going to say we're going to create kind of a local variable name incoming direction. We're going to get the in value from our input number zero. Uh, so that's going to refer to this item right here. Okay, so we've got incoming direction. We'll have hit position equals same kind of thing. TP in out get in value one and hit normal is going to be TP in out get in value two. Okay, then what we want to do is we want to set up a a little check in the software that says uh, and make sure that all of those values are not undefined. Otherwise, our script's going to throw errors. So we're going to create something here. We'll say if if inc dir is not equal to undefined and if hit posts is not equal oops posts is not equal to undefined and uh, hit normal is not equal to undefined. Then we'll go on and do the next leg of that fun there. And what we're going to do is we want to calculate the cross product of our, and in this case remember we're going to be using the y direction off this helper. So we want to take the y direction and calculate the cross product against the um, surface normal or the hit normal. And actually why don't we jump in here real quick and start fleshing out uh, some of the logic we're going to need to use and test this system. So we're going to have a node that's going to be our helper or our shooter and for that we're going to also need a get direction to pull out its y direction that we're going to use. And we're also going to need another node for the ground so we'll grab that and then we're also going to want an intersect. The intersect who we're going to intersect with is that ground node the direction coming in is going to be the y direction and the position that's going to be calculating the uh, intersect is going to be the position of our helper here so it's from this position out in that direction where does it hit on this object and it's going to go ahead and show us that there we'll go ahead and throw out just a generator right now so that we can see that in action so we get a hit we want to control when this uh, occurs do a part of one pistol shot per call. Okay, so nothing's happening. Let's make sure our edit on the fly is turned off so we get real time updates. And what we want to do is we want the speed is ray length, so it will calculate all the way along that ray and detect uh, anywhere on that ray if it is intersecting. And then the other problem, of course, is that our length is not going to be long enough. And you can see that one dot appear now, so it must be right around the yeah, right around the 20 uh, 20 units away. We'll go ahead and make it pretty long just in case we end up moving our shooter away. Okay, so we've got all that. And now what we want to do is uh, jump back into our script and say, 
Okay, so we've got all these incoming directions, which is going to be our y. Let's actually go ahead and evaluate this so we can get the operator out here. Um, we want this to be an operator, and we're going to want this to be in a, I think it is called M3D tutorial category. Let's go ahead and evaluate that. It shows up true. Okay, that's great. So let's go ahead and come into operators, M3D tutorial. We've got re reflection direction tutorial. Okay, so our color is off. We want that to be an operator, so I'm going to change that. And there we go. Okay, so what we're going to have is we've got our incoming direction coming out of our, our Y, our little shooter there. We've got a hit position, so the position where it hits, and then we have a hit normal. And that normal, we can either use the actual geometry normal or kind of the uh, average normal, I think that is. And what we'll do then is we're going to calculate that reflection direction. And we're going to kind of cheat this position born and turn it into kind of a birth iterator. The way we're going to do that is we're going to create a whole bunch of um, particles. Uh, sorry, yeah, what we're going to do is uh, create a pistol shot with that using emission distance and then vary that emission distance, we're going to take away the uh, direction variation. And this kind of allows us just to kind of do a quick cheat and kind of show a, a direction with a length there. Okay, and so let's go ahead and get that direction exposed on the position born because we're going to kind of test these as we go. Uh, what we're going to do is jump back into our script and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that uh, incoming direction and the hit normal and we're going to calculate the cross product. Um, what this is going to do is it's actually going to kind of create it's going to take this direction and the z normal there and it's going to calculate a cross product and we're actually going to refer to that as the right leg or the x, x axis of our uh, alignment that we're going to create. So we'll say right leg equals cross incoming direction with hit normal okay and we're also going to go ahead and throw in here uh, case tp out id of if the out id is one or i'm sorry if the out id is zero then the whatever is connected to our operator wants that uh, zero connection which is our reflection direction so in order to kind of test this, we're going to go ahead and just pump out this uh, right leg direction out in that uh, direction. Um, otherwise, if it's 1, uh, we'll just output a value of 1. It doesn't have to be anything critical right there. Okay, so if, if all of the, let's kind of wrap up our functions. If any of these are undefined, then we're going to skip that and say else undefined. And then, of course, if our out ID is not uh, zero or higher, then we're going to return undefined also. So let's go ahead and update this. Okay, now we'll connect our reflection direction into the position borns direction. And what that's going to do, remember we're calculating that right leg uh, cross product of those vectors, and then we're going to output that right leg. And what we'll see is a big fat error. So that's that's good. It's fun to uh, debug that. Um, yeah, we have to actually name our things correctly. Incoming direction would be good. So now we get it. Okay, so you can see that as we move our uh, little shooter there, that Y direction is always pointing out there. The, the hit normal, of course, on this piece of geometry is in Z. Let's actually go ahead and rotate our colliding surface so we can kind of change that up. Okay, well that's getting a little bit funky there, but um, we'll jump back into that in a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually take a look at what the hit normal looks like. And so as you would expect, that hit normal is just the normal off this geometry straight up in Z. So that's actually going to act as the um, Z direction of our alignment that we're going to create. We've already got the right leg, which is coming out here. That's going to be the X portion of our alignment matrix. We get the Z, and then 
we're going to make the cross product of the right leg and the uh, hit normal in order to get our y leg or our y direction of our um, alignment. So we'll go ahead and calculate that. We'll call that front leg. And now these are really technical terms here, but and what we're going to do there is with the cross product of the uh, the hit normal and the right leg. And let's go ahead and just output that. Check that as we go. So remember now, this is the the front leg that we're uh, looking at. So this is showing us kind of the y direction of the alignment matrix that we're creating. Okay, and actually we have enough now to create an actual alignment. So we're going to go ahead and just say, uh, we'll call it hit matrix. Although actually hit align would be better. Since it's not an actual full matrix per se. Uh, but we're, we're going to go ahead and use a matrix 3. And we're going to compose it. We're going to use the, uh, well, let's see, which is it? Well, we want to use the x x direction first. So that will be our right leg. And then the y direction, which is our front leg and then our hit normal which is provided to us from the intersect or the SC collision and then of course since we're creating a matrix we're going to need a position component which we can just use all the zeros and let's go ahead then and output our hit alignment that matrix that we created and remember uh, TP looks at a matrix 3 value and from that it can derive its alignments pull the alignment value out of there. So we'll go ahead and update this and we're going to actually pop in a black box under M3D helpers called show axes which allows us to take an alignment and it will kind of create um, let's go ahead and get this in here uh, starting position let's actually use the hit position okay Go ahead and disconnect that direction right there. Uh, or just disable the whole operator. Okay, and so you see what we get is the alignment coming out of our collision space alignment. Uh, it comes into the show axes, and the show axes just uh, does a bunch of iterations through x, y, and z to create uh, a series of particles. And here what we'll do next is we actually want to, uh, we're going to run into cases where you can see as we squeeze that angle, our length of our axes there get a little twisted. Uh, one step we need to do is add an orthogonalize so that our matrix uh, retains its square integrity or its cubic integrity. And so you can see what's happening is our ray is shooting off that y direction. It intersects at that point right there. And then we calculate that right leg, which is the x, x direction, the y axis, and then the z axis, which is just the hit normal off that surface. Okay, now for the fun part, we're going to take our incoming our incoming vector direction and we are going to want to have that show us the actual reflection and one of the ways we can do that is with, by using this front leg as an angle axis value so that will give us our axis uh, using that front leg and then what we do is we rotate that just whatever it is we rotate it 180 and so that will essentially kind of f um, flip this downward uh, incoming direction and it will kind of rotate it around 180 degrees around this axis uh, in order to give us kind of that reflection. So what we will do is we will say um, we'll call it rotation axis equals and we're, oh, we're going to create an angle axis and using 180 degree rotation around our front leg But there's actually one little extra thing we want to do there is we want to treat that as a quaternion um, because what we're going to end up wanting to do is we want to multiply our point three either by a matrix or a quat. So we're going
going to go ahead and multiply it by the quaternion in order to rotate that incoming vector around that space. So we've got the rotation axis being that, and so then we'll have a uh, reflector being equal to our incoming direction multiplied by our rotation axis. And then what we'll do is we'll actually change our outputs so that our uh, reflection direction is actually now equal to this reflection direction. And we'll go ahead and update and we get a whole bunch of errors. So that's always fun. Let's go ahead and see what happened. Uh, let's see. Uh, well this extra Z here could be a problem. Let's try to get rid of that. Update. All right. Hooray. Yeah, just one little typo threw everything out the window, so of course watch out. Okay, so you can see as we now move around, our um, our y direction is coming out here. It shows us the actual hit location, and then it shows us that reflected reflected uh, direction. And as we bring our make our angle tighter there and closer toward perfectly down, you can see what's happening is the the incoming direction, there's our hit normal in blue, and then our outcoming direction. So those those are equal. Equal angles on opposite sides, so we've created that uh, reflected direction. And the reason that th this is going to be useful is because in uh, shape collision, whenever we're going to have an impact and kick up dust, um, we don't just want kind of a burst in all directions, um, kind of a spherical collision. What we actually want is something that takes into account the incoming direction uh, in order to show that kind of bah, it hits here and casts more dirt or d dust whatever out that direction. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and save this. Save this as uh, TP script operators video examples. We will call this Reflection Dur tutorial. Okay. So we'll go ahead and update it one last time, make sure it's all still there. That's great. And oops. Let's go ahead and save this file as a reflection direction end. Okay, so that wraps up that. Let's go ahead and move on. We've got a reflected direction that we can now use either the intersect or shape collision. And so we'll go ahead and see how we can put that into practice in some of the production videos.